The final assignment in our fractal series is to create a fern. And here I have pictured a fern from nature. If you look carefully, you can definitely see the fractal nature. The whole fern is then created by copying smaller ferns that are poking off at uh, angles. And then each of those is created in turn by smaller ferns poking off at other angles. If we were to look at the fractal from the point of view of the computer, this is a good representation of how it is put together. The whole fractal is represented by that black square. The three smaller ferns are represented by the light blue, dark blue, and red squares to indicate their positions and angles. So a fern is consisting of three smaller ferns, one which is almost as large at the top, slightly angled, and then two that are significantly smaller with more of an angle part of the way back down the stem. And then the stem, of course, is the yellow line. So this is similar to a tree, just configured slightly differently. Let's take a look at the code. Here I have a fern turtle and a fern method. In these algorithms, I don't have a base case per se. I just have uh, a way of keeping the recursion from going on forever. That's why I base this on size, and I don't have a depth parameter. So rather than relying on the depth parameter to tell me when to stop, I just stop when my size gets small enough. And you can see that I go all the way up the stem, forward size, turn just a small angle, make a fern that's almost as large, it's uh, eight-tenths as large, go backwards a little ways down the stem, turn off at an angle, make a significantly smaller fern, get back onto the stem, go back down a little bit more, turn off to the right, and create a significantly smaller fern, and then get back to the bottom. If we were to run this to see the shape, here's what we would get. So you can see a very similar shape to uh, the picture out of nature. Now I have other fern shapes that I've created, and I'll show those to you now. Here's a fern that looks a little bit more like the top of a stalk of wheat, very narrow angles. Here's a fern that looks very similar to the first one, but it's a little bit more widely spaced. And here's one that actually looks more like a maple leaf, where the smaller ferns at, are at equal angles. Uh, another feature of this one is that there are actually five smaller ferns and not three. Let's go back to the code, and I will show you a couple of additional fern algorithms. So the first algorithm you've already seen. The second and third methods do something slightly different. They let me specify arguments for the angles and sizes of the smaller ferns. So I have a size argument and then arguments for each of the angles and sizes. And when I do my recursive calls, notice that I just pass through those angles. So they don't change from one iteration to the next one in depth. If you wanted to, you could also play around with modifying these parameters so that each depth of iteration had slightly different looks in terms of the angles and sizes. My Fern 3 algorithm is really the same thing, except this is the one that generated my maple leaf. You can see there are, in fact, five recursive calls. So this assignment is much more free form than the last. And what I challenge you to do is go beyond what I've done here. You might first start by implementing a basic fern, um, maybe taking one of these other algorithms that let you pass through angles and sizes, and then go beyond that. Try changing colors based on depth of recursion or based on some other factor. Try modifying some of these angles and sizes as you go through depths of recursion. And there are lots of other things you can do. So be creative and artistic. This concludes the Fern demonstration. 
Thanks for watching.